you ever sit back and imagine what it's like to be famous? I mean, what would it be like to be famous, right? Like you've got cameras on you often, right? The cameras are on you often. They're taking your pictures and, you know, it's like, it's like, you, it's, it's like selfies all the time, except for you don't have to take the selfie, right? Someone else is taking the selfies for you. Right? There's cameras on you. People know your name everywhere you go. Like you can't even really hide anywhere. You know, anywhere you go, people are talking to you. They're snapping, they're snapping your photos. And of course, there's like riches galore, right? There's riches that come with being famous. You can get whatever cars that you want. And of course, there's power and influence. It's all very glamorous, right? Being famous can be incredibly glamorous and yet the most famous person in history didn't look anything like that instead the most famous person in the history of the world walked 21,000 miles to share stories of hope instead the most famous person in history turned tables in Jerusalem as he went into the the, to the uh, churches, to the synagogue, he went in and flipped the tables of the religious leaders to warn them that he was on a mission to fulfill his purpose. The most famous person in history, he hung around with the least of these. He hung around with the less than. He served the children, the sick, and the weak, facing death the entire time. He was the most famous man in the world. And he served others relentlessly, offering people hope and encouragement. In the Bible, Romans 15, 4, it says, Such things were written in the scriptures long ago to teach us. And the scriptures give us hope and encouragement as we wait patiently for God's promise to be fulfilled. You see, I, for one, I'm incredibly thankful that we have these historical documents that we can refer to, these lessons that have been learned in the past that we can ultimately extract and use to apply in our lives today at times where there's questions, at times where sometimes we might feel lost or we start to lose hope or encouragement. We have these documents, we have these stories that can fulfill that void and that need in our lives. You see, hope and encouragement, two pivotal components in all of our lives. We need hope. We need encouragement. The climate of our lives changes more now than ever. The things that we're experiencing, everything that we're going through here in 2020, it's a very interesting thing. It's, it's a thing that leads to confusion. It's a thing that leads to uncertainty, that leads to anxiety. And so as this climate of our lives continues to change more now than ever, our hope starts to shift. That hope shifts to despair. And when hope shifts to despair, another emotion is born. It's an emotion called fear. And you see, fear is the last thing someone like Jesus wants for you or anyone. If you look in the Bible, the words fear not are in the Bible 365 times. 365 times. It's because you see, fear is the opposite of love. There's a quote that I came across as I've been studying the most famous person in the history of the world. There's a quote that I came across that I love that I wanted to share with you. And it says, love is the anecdote to fear. They are opposite. There is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear. You see, friends, by offering others hope, we can ultimately draw out a feeling of love. This feeling of love can then squash the feeling of fear. You with me? Are you following me right now? 
You see, I'm a student. I love to study success. And as we study the most famous person in the history of the world, as I continue to study and continue to learn more and more what it looks like. Last week, we talked about it. Or sorry, yesterday. Yesterday, we talked about as we study Jesus, as we learn from him, we learned that we need to walk in our purpose, right? And we learned that we need to fight for what we believe in. And we need to, and we learned that we have to do whatever it takes, even in the face of death. We learned all of these things. And as I continue to dive further, I see today that in our responsibility, what we can do as leaders in this period of time is to offer people an anecdote. You see, by offering others hope, we can draw out a feeling of love. When we draw out a feeling of love, this can squash their feelings of fear. And it also can increase and develop bonds and relationships like we've never had before. Bonds and relationships with our friends, bonds and relationships with our family members, bonds and relationships with our customers and our businesses. If we can give them the antidote, if we can give them hope and encouragement, if we can fulfill this so that they fear not, what an opportunity we have. What an opportunity we have in our lives. That word encouragement, as I think about that word, you see, from the time we were little, We've always benefited from a little encouragement, right? Those of you that parents, I'm assuming you encourage your kids to live their dreams, to go out and do amazing things. You encourage them. You offer them hope, right? And tell them to fear not. So as we were little, we've been encouraged to, to you know, we've been encouraged along the way. Now, something I've been encouraging my son to do because he's just ridiculously passionate about it is fishing. My son absolutely loves to go fishing. We have a pond down on the, uh, we've got 10 acres of land. We got a two acre pond down there in the pond. We've got bass and bluegill and catfish. And my son is just hooked. This boy is eight years old and he will sit down there for hours upon hours upon hours upon hour. And he will fish and he'll tie his lines. And he just is, it's amazing. He loves it. He watches all the fishing shows. He, he just absolutely loves fishing. He knows the different lures, so on and so forth the kids i mean i don't know anything about fishing but i just see his passion i see how much how purposeful it is for him how much joy it brings him and so i encourage him i encourage him to do that now the other day i was walking on my on my back deck and i noticed that willow's jacket was sitting there and one of joel's lures with three hooks on each side was stuck all up in her jacket. Like it was a knotted up mess, right? It was a knotted up mess. And I was like, man, I got to try to get this thing out of here. I got to save this kid's lure. So I take my little pliers and I take this jacket and I'm sitting there and I'm trying to pull the hooks out of each piece of the cloth. And as I'm pulling one little hook out of the cloth, another hook gets caught in the jacket. And so I'm sitting here for a good 40, 45 minutes trying to get this thing out without ruining Willow's jacket. It's delicate surgery, right? I got to pull out the lure and then I got to not ruin the jacket. And so I get the first hook out and I'm like, yes, and I'm in encouraged and I get the second one I'm like yes I'm encouraged I get the third one I'm like yes I can keep going I get the fourth one I'm like I'm almost there I get the fifth one I'm like yes I'm working on the sixth one the last one and as I yank the sixth one out with the clippers that last hook catches right in my finger it goes right into my finger and oh my gosh my heart rate you want to talk about getting your heart rate up my heart rate goes through the roof. Just a little bit of blood, not much. I'm sitting there. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm yanking on it. I'm pulling on it. I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get this hook out of my finger. It won't come out. I am, my heart rate continues to increase. 
Like I had started to lose all hope. I started to lose all hope that this thing was ever going to come out. I'm telling you, man, I got like lightheaded at one point. I was breathing because <sighs> I'm hitting here. And I'm trying to yank this thing out of my finger and it won't yank and it hurts and it hurts more and more and more. And the fear starts to set in like this hook is going to stay in my finger. I'm got to go to the hospital, but I can't go to the hospital. This is non-essential. They're just going to tell me I got to live with a hook in my hand. All of those things are racing through my head and I can't get this thing out. And so we sit and I'm like, okay. And then the other hooks keep catching my hand. And so my wife's got to take the pliers and she cuts and she cuts and she cuts and she's cutting off the different barbs. And with each cut, the pain is just shooting through my body. It hurts so bad. Every single time she'd clip off another piece of that hook and she's cutting and she's cutting and she's cutting and we still can't get this thing out. And so, and my son sees me and he's in tears and he feels guilt and he feels shame. And so he's crying and my daughter's crying. She takes the baby. My wife's over here trying to figure it out. We get on the phone with my stepdad and my stepdad's like, okay, dude, you got to push it through. He says, the only way that hook is coming out of that finger is you got to push it all the way through. That little tiny part that's poking out has got to come all the way out so that you can cut it. You got to cut the barb and push it all the way through. And so as my wife encouraged me and as my stepdad encouraged me that we could get this thing through my finger and move on with life, ultimately we were able to get the hook out. We were able to push it through. Now that next morning, my son, Joel, <laughs> but did you die? That next morning, my son, Joel, it was a beautiful day. I said, Joel, man, you gonna go out there fishing? And all of a sudden he says, he says, no, dad, you know, the fish really aren't biting the way that they were. And the wind's kind of pushing this way. And, uh, you know, I've been losing some, losing my line a little bit. And I mean, just words I'd never heard out of this boy's mouth. I'd never heard these words before. He'd never said a negative thing about fishing ever in the history of all time. But all of a sudden now he had fear. The fear had settled in and he had lost a little bit of hope. He was scared and what he needed was some encouragement. So I dropped everything I was doing. I said, no, 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 son. Uh -uh. Don't, don't let dad's situation with the hook. That didn't even have anything to do with fishing. I said, but don't let dad's situation with the hook keep you from stepping out into your purpose. Don't let fear keep you from doing what you love. I said, come on, I'm going to go out there with you. And so we went out to the pond and I put my boy back on the fishing pole and he threw it out and he started catching some fish and the joy came back in his heart. And since then, he's been fishing basically every day since then. You see, those are the same kinds of things the most famous person in the world is saying to you right now. The most famous person in the world is saying to you, keep going. Fear not. You see, there's a verse in the Bible, Jeremiah 29, 11, It says, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. As we take time this week to study the most famous person in history, I want you to ask yourself this question. With your actions and with your words, are you offering hope and encouragement or something else? You see, you, my friend, are a child of God, the God of the universe, the God that made everything, made you to ultimately have an impact in other people's lives. To be able to offer hope and encouragement in other people's lives. But in order for you to do that, it must come from a place of love where you fear not. See, you yourself must have hope. You yourself must be encouraged in order to be able to go out and make that impact. So I'm asking you with your posts that you make, with the words that you're using, with the conversations that you're having both outside and inside. Are you offering hope and encouragement or are you offering something 
else. I challenge you today, if you love people as much as I think you do, I challenge you to offer as much hope and encouragement as you can. There's a lot of people in fearful places and you can make an impact on their lives. Listen, if you need more videos like this, you can go to glennlundy.com. That's right, glennlundy.com. Don't forget my wife and children's plea for you to go get some Rise and Grind gear over at glennlundy.com. Don't forget that as you're heading into your day. But seriously, most importantly, will you do me a favor? Will you come back here again tomorrow morning at 5.30 a.m.? Because we're going to do this all over again. And I would really, really look and feel weird if I was just sitting here all by myself talking to no one. So I need you to join me and I need you to bring your friends with you, if you would, here on hashtag Rise and Grind. Share this out. Somebody needs some hope. Somebody needs some encouragement today. Have a fantastic, amazing day. Know that I stink and love you. I do. If nobody's told you that yet today, I want to be the first. I absolutely stink and love you. Know that I love you. Have an incredible day. And I'll see you tomorrow morning, 5.30 a.m. on hashtag Rise and Grind.